Welcome to today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford, expert advice on improving your home. From the pages of today's Homeowner magazine and remodeling contractor Danny Lipford. Now Dave, that should finish that up. Welcome to the show this week. You know, regardless of what part of the country you live in and what kind of climate you deal with, a sunroom can be a great addition to your house. A good place for entertaining and an excellent place to bring those plants in during the winter months. But there's a number of design considerations that have to be given when you're building a sunroom. We'll look at those considerations on this week's show and show you how we're progressing from the start of this sunroom addition right up to the completion. So stay with us on today's Homeowner. You know, when the homeowners first started considering building an area like this to use as a sunroom, they first thought about the aluminum and glass structures you see so much. But because this was such a traditional style home, they were a little concerned about how it would actually look and how it would actually attach to the rear of the house. With the eave area being somewhat low, they were afraid in attaching the glass structure to it would create a very low ceiling. So they decided to go with more conventional construction and really make this a true addition to their home. Now, of course, they wanted the sunroom look, and of course, the way to achieve that is through plenty of windows. And that's a good tip when you're designing your sunroom, is to use the exact same size window whenever possible throughout the sunroom area. Now, these windows are three foot by five foot, and we've grouped three of them together here, a triple, another triple there, a triple on this end, and then use the same size window for two singles on the other end. So that gives you that symmetrical feeling all the way around the house. Now later on, they'll be putting screens in here so that they can open the windows from certain times of the year. Now one thing we did different here than the other windows they have on the house, and of course these are good insulated windows, bronze aluminum, but there's no grill pattern, no grid in here like the rest of the windows in the house. Now you can get away with that in a sunroom because it really adds to the spaciousness and the look of the real airiness in a room when you have a one over one design like that. Now, of course, when they removed the bricks from the original back part of the house, they took a lot of care to clean those and stack them in a good safe area to be used by the brick mason in just a few days when he comes to lay his bricks. But one of the main things the homeowners wanted to achieve is that airiness and that real spacious feeling inside. We were able to take advantage of the large hip roof that we have to use that on a hip roof ceiling on the inside. Looks like it's about to rain. Let's go inside and I'll show you. Now the room is 16 feet by 24 feet, but what really makes it impressive is the 13 foot tall ceiling we've been able to obtain by really taking advantage of this hip roof design. Now the construction on the roof starts with our two by eight rafters. We have them on 16 inch centers. Now we could have used two by sixes on 24 inch centers, saved a little money and a little bit of time, but we really needed the two by eights for several reasons. One is that not only is it supporting the roof load, but also will be supporting the half inch drywall ceiling that'll be nailed to the bottom side of it. Also by using the two by eights, we're able to put in six inches of insulation, which will leave a couple inches there for air to flow in from our soffit areas and flow right on up to the attic, keeping everything nice and cool in here and also reducing any of the moisture that can accumulate in a closed ceiling area like this. Also, you may notice the little hurricane straps or tie-down straps that attach the rafters to the plate as well as the header in this case. Now, these are required in many parts of the United States, particularly here in the southeast part of the United States in case any high winds or in case of a hurricane, it will keep these attached firmly to the wall. It's a good safety mechanism there. Now, another thing that's a, something to consider, most homeowners in sunrooms have the inclination to get as much glass as possible, but it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a space here, not only for strength in the wall, but for decorating purposes later on. It's kind of nice to have a little bit of a wall, the same way we have 
with the wall section behind us there. It gives you just a little bit of room to work with, maybe a room to place a chair or a little a piece of furniture or something along those lines. Of course, any kind of addition needs good access from the main part of the house into the new area. And what we'll use this for is to install a door later on. Now, well, this is the original back wall of the house. Had bricks in here and, of course, the window. It's the same type of aluminum window we have in the rest of the addition. This will be removed later in the project and a door placed here. Now, the room behind us here is a master bedroom. So the homeowners will use this kind of as a little retreat area. They'll have plenty of plants in here, maybe have their cup of coffee in the morning here. It's a perfect place for that. And with the access that we have to the outside, it can also be used very easily for entertaining. That's another good design aspect of a room like this, to have that access to the outside that can be developed and landscaped. Another code issue are the windows we have on either side of the doors. It's required to have tempered glass there or safety glass because of the possibility of the doors blowing open and the doorknobs hitting that glass could be very dangerous. With the tempered glass, it minimizes that. Now next, we'll take care of some of those simple problems you have around your house with this week's Simple Solution. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine Repair and Maintenance Editor Joe Truini show you this week's simple solution brought to you by Dodge. Now something that can really be frustrating is a slow draining sink or a clog sink. The first tool that most homeowners reach for is a plunger to clear sink clogs. But here are a few fl plumbing tricks that can help improve the efficiency of the plunger. First start by removing the pop-up drain from the sink bottom. Then take a tissue or a rag, dampen it, and use it to plug up the overflow openings on the side of the sink. That'll help direct the plunging pressure directly to the clog. Next, take a little petroleum jelly and smear it along the bottom lip of the plunger. That'll help form an airtight seal against the sink bottom. Next, run a little water down the drain, then plunge vigorously three or four times. Run a little more water to clear out the clog. Now, if this method isn't successful, you may have to go under the sink and disconnect the P-trap and use a plumber snake. You know, one thing that's nice about an addition of this size is that most of the tradesmen can complete their work in a relatively short time. Brick masons have been able to complete all of their work over the last couple days, and the painters have been by applying a coat of primer and two finish coats on all of the new wood around the overhang area of the addition. Now with a little landscaping on the outside, screens in the windows, everything on the exterior of this project will be complete other than the patio slab will be pouring right at the end of the project after all of the traffic has died down going in and out of the addition. So the focus now is on the interior where the drywall contractor is putting on his finished coats. Now the homeowners plan on using this addition as a sunroom and you can see all the plants behind me that they plan on storing in the addition during the winter months. Now when you're planning an addition like this to be used as a sunroom, whenever possible, position it as we have done here on the south side of the house where you get the most sun throughout the year. North side of the house, probably least desirable because you're just not going to get quite enough sun that you need to really use it as a sunroom. Of course, the sun can present some problems that we'll address shortly, but let's check on the progress inside. Well, all of the drywall has been installed on the inside of the sunroom addition, and now Mark, our finisher, is in the process of applying one of several coats of joint compound in order to get the walls and ceilings looking just right. You know, traditionally, drywall contractors will come in and apply just one coat of joint compound per day. They come back the next day for the second coat, third day, and so forth, potentially tying a job up like this for three or four days. Well, Mark, like many drywall contractors across the country, are finding out about a more fast-setting joint compound that allows them to put multiple coats of drywall compound on in the same day. So Mark, being here just one day, will completely finish all of this on the inside, come back tomorrow for a little bit of sanding, a little bit of touch-up, be ready to turn it over to the trim carpenters. Now, when you're talking about sunrooms, you're talking about a lot of glass, a lot of windows. When you're talking about a lot of windows, you're talking about the potential for a good bit of heat gain during the summertime or heat loss during the winter. So the homeowners were very concerned about the heating and cooling of this area. 
they decided to go with a through-the-wall unit, which is very similar to the hospital rooms or hotel room units that you see. It's a combination air conditioner and heating system. Now we had to install the housing that you see here prior to the brick mason doing his work so that he could tie everything into the brickwork as well as a drywall contractor being able to tie it in real well. This way we can isolate this room instead of tying it in to the existing air conditioning heating system in the original house. That way if, they're, if the needs out here are more cooling, more heating, they can control it very easily with this unit. Now another way to prevent problems with heat gain or heat loss is using the proper window coverings like an insulated type curtain may work well to help control a lot of that exchange of air. But also a window film is a good way to control that and to prevent some of the harmful rays that can fade your carpets or some of your furniture. Recently we talked with a company that handles this type of window film. Well, Joe, you're making the installation of the window film look very easy. I'm with Joe Richard with CP Films, and I think most homeowners realize the benefits from an energy saving standpoint of film, but what are some of the other advantages? Well, there are a number, uh, one of which is ultraviolet protection. We know that uh, ultraviolet light is a tremendously important factor in the degradation of uh, fabrics and uh, draperies and furniture and wood floor stands, for example. Well, ordinary window glass, uh, most people are unaware, does block a lot of ultraviolet light, but unfortunately, what it's blocking is ultraviolet B radiation. Ultraviolet A is where most of the UV radiation lies that comes from the sun. And window films such as this will block 99% of that and giving you superior protection. Okay, so it'll really make your draperies, furniture, that type of thing Absolutely. look newer longer. And the more expensive your furnishings, the more valuable the window film. Okay, that makes sense. Also, I've read about how it provides a shatter resistance to the actual window. So that's a good security benefit. That's right. Uh, this is a very powerful mounting adhesive. Uh, and the polyester has a very high tensile strength, so it acts as a kind of safety skin holding uh, glass fragments together should the window be broken from the outside. I see. When you say window film to most homeowners, I think they envision this dark bronze finish on that, but this is a, a very clear kind of a gray look, and there's, there's a lot of different colors available. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is a neutral low E film uh, that we've got. Uh, window films are available in a wide selection of uh, levels of uh, reflectance, uh, it, needn't have, it needn't be dark and shiny, in other words. Okay, now if it's installed properly, how long should it last? Well, easily five to seven years. Uh, a good window film such as this would give you uh, perhaps five to ten years, depending on the part of the country that you're in. Okay, talking about installation, now, I've seen some homeowners attempt this. Uh, what are some good tips that you can give homeowners for a successful installation? Well, sure. The, the easiest way to ruin an installation is to leave paint flecks and uh, chunks of dirt uh, under the film. You really want to spray the window with a strong soapy water solution and scrape thoroughly with a single edge razor blade. That will remove any uh, uh, bound flecks of uh, paint that may be stuck from uh, the last time you painted your house. And without removing those, uh, that will create a serious eyesore uh, for, the, for as long as you've got the film on the glass. I see. Well, this is some great information and, and I can see a lot of advantages in having window film. It's great stuff. It's time to check out this week's best new product with Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine Editor-in-Chief, Paul Spring. Brought to you by The Home Depot. Like most homeowners, I'm concerned about the quality and taste of my drinking water. Now, I thought I would have to put in this big filtration system under the sink, but instead I've taken Paul's recommendation and I'm going to install the Moen Pure Touch, which is one of our best new products. You know, Danny, there are two things I love about this faucet. The first is it's just a beautiful, heavy cast, single-handled faucet. But the other is, in this pull-out handle, is a disposable cartridge filter that's very, very effective. And to get to the cartridge, it has a quick disconnect here that you release, and then you just simply lift that off, and you're able to lift the filter right out. Now, these filters are made by Culligan. There are, in fact, three different kinds that ad address different problems uh, that you can have in water. This one is for chlorine, lead, and cysts and is very effective. Now, to put a new cartridge in is very, very simple. You just plug it in, snap the end, listen for those three beeps, and it tells you you've done it correctly. Then, once you get it reassembled in the handle like this, you're ready to go. When you want filtered water, you merely push the button on the end like this, and as you can see, it'll actually tell you how much of the filter remains. In this case, 100% because we just put in a new one. Now, by by bypassing the filter in normal operation and the water coming out of the big outlet, 
for things like washing dishes and that type of thing, your filter will last a good long time, as much as six months. Well, as you can see, we can't make it inside the sunroom today because it's being occupied by our ceramic tile installers. Now, they installed the tile yesterday, and they're in the process of grouting it and then cleaning the surface of it. Then they'll allow it to dry one more day, and we can get in and do all the finishing touches. Now, the way this has been installed is a real unique pattern. You have a 12-inch by 12-inch tile and then a 6-inch by 6-inch right beside it, giving it almost a herringbone look. Now, the homeowner chose a dark green grout, which really complements all of the walls. You can see the painter has been able to finish painting all of the walls with the green color and then maintaining the white trim. And after the ceramic tile installer is complete, he'll come back in and do a little bit of touch-ups here and there, and then we'll be ready for the final cleanup. Now, another part of this project that will restrict the access into the sunroom is the pouring of this patio slab. Now we had to be very careful in laying this slab out because we had to pay attention to all of the water that's coming into this area. Now this original patio slab slopes in this direction, so a good bit of water will be coming off the roof here and moving in this direction. Also the original carport flows in this direction and the driveway itself flows very steeply in this direction. So we use these basically as our form board to create the slab. We have a step down on this end but this should take care of any of the water that may come into this area and direct it safely onto the grass. So the next step is to pour the patio slab. We were concerned about the integrity of the concrete driveway because of the presence of so many surface cracks. So we decided to use a motorized wheelbarrow to bring the concrete into the area. Now we're using about three yards of concrete and the process of pouring this concrete, like most concrete, putting the concrete in the forms and carefully raking it out and making sure that we grade it real well to our grade line along the addition. After that we finished it with a nice broom finish to give it a little bit of a texture to prevent any slippage in the case of rain. Now the homeowner plans on installing guttering throughout this entire area later on and instead of having the downspout spill out onto the new concrete which could really cause an erosion problem we installed some underground drainage. Now you see the four inch pipe that we have here. The downspout will tie right into that. We also have another one against the other column. Then it ties together and goes right out to the corner of the yard through a five inch pipe. At the end of the pipe, we have some of the old bricks, broken bricks there to disperse the water once it gets to that point to prevent any erosion in that part of the yard. Stay with us when we come back. We'll go inside and take a look at the finished addition. Now, let's go outside for Around the Yard with Danny and lawn and garden expert Jennifer Brennan. Brought to you by Scott's Lawn Products for a great lawn guaranteed. No, you're not looking at a problem with this yard. Actually, it's a solution to a problem. This yard has been core aerated, and this is the machine that has done it. Look down here and notice these tines. They're very sharp, and they pull three-inch plugs out of the soil area. You can rent these machines for under $100 at your local rental center, or a lawn care service will do this for an average size lawn under $200. By pulling these plugs out, you open the root zone up for more oxygen, more nutrients, and more water. This will cause deeper rooting for the root zone, and this is the best rejuvenation process you can do for your lawn. Now, what time of the year is best to use the aerator? Usually, it's best to do this just as the lawn's going into an active growth period, and that's usually in the spring. Also, after you use the aerator, it's a perfect time to apply fertilizer to your yard. Well, I was just taking a look at some of the wallpaper border the homeowner plans on installing on the upper part of the wall, which is much easier to install than crown molding in a vaulted ceiling like this. Well, the room's complete. The floor's all been installed and clean. Looks great. Air conditioned heating unit has been installed. And as soon as Dave finishes up on the plant hooks, the homeowner can bring some of her many hanging baskets in and use the room as she plans on using it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's show and seen some of the tips about sunrooms, and I hope you'll join us next week. Mm -hmm.